Jason McIntyre's new daily podcast on iHeartRadio. It's called Straight Fire. It drops every morning at 5 a.m. Eastern time. Go subscribe. It's basically the hot topic of the day. What was the hot topic of today, Jason? Doug, it starts, starts next week. If it was, there. if it was this week, well, what, if, what, what would you know, be in today? It's interesting. So I, I've been, you know, Rob Guerra, one of the uh, producers at uh, Odd Couple. Uh, we've been emailing basically every day. Hey, if we had a podcast tomorrow, what would we talk about? And I, we, we don't want to fall into the rut that a lot of shows fall into. Hey, what's going on with the Patriots and the Cowboys and LeBron? Like there are big stories, and one of the stories you and I were discussing in a in a friendly manner. Uh, on social media this week was, co- you know, college sports happening this fall and can athletes be responsible? And I love this as a topic. I got to be honest. I don't know if the general fan cares. And I talk with Cowherd about this. You you guys are good friends as well. Like, he doesn't think that this is like that huge of a story. But for me, uh, I know the young fans, they're all talking about that. This is like, if there's no college football on Saturdays this fall, Doug, it's going to be a catastrophe. You know, oh, it, fi- financially, it's absolutely a catastrophe. Okay, so your your point is, you can't ask athletes to not go out to bars yeah, and, and me, parties. Let me give the the elevator pitch on on you know on that. First of all, I look. I, I want to look at both sides of the coin. You know, it's easy for me, a dad of two young elementary school kids, to say, "Come on, kids, wear a mask. Don't go to party." That's easy. Let me put myself in my shoes. The weekend my parents dropped me off at college. It was school? instantly like, oh, what school? Huh? What school? I, I started Virginia Tech. Well, okay. my parents dropped me off. Within two hours, I had a beer in my hand, and I was looking to get hammered and try to hook up with chicks. I mean, that was like every freshman, right? Then you go to sophomore year, and you know now it's like a house party situation. But you're looking to party three or four nights a week. That's the reality. And I know it's easy to say, hey, these guys are on a scholarship. Some are going to go pro. Easy, you just shut it down. Don't go to parties. I just think that irresponsible for media members who are in the 35 and up age to say to 20 and 19 and 21 year olds, Hey guys, can you not party for four months? Can you stay around all college people for four months and not party? Can you just do that? That's just impossible. Doug. I don't think it's realistic. Oh, I, I think it's, it's possible. Um, I, I, I think it takes discipline, but I think also that personal self-discipline is what allowed them to be, you know, high level college athletes to begin with. It's like, look, if you want to play your sport, these are the sacrifices you have to make. It's, it's a lot like, like in the state of California, you can go down the stores, go down the street, wait, you see the green cross and buy some weed. Not if you play and you can't smoke it or, or, or take edibles. If you're, you're playing in college and you get tested, you test positive for it. Right? Like, so there's, there are plenty of things to which every college student can do. You can't do. That's the sacrifice it takes. And in this particular year, it's not that great an ask. It's just not like we're like, hey man, I, what do you go like in college? If you're a college football player, you, you don't. Maybe you go out once a week. Maybe if you have time, but most times you don't. It's after the game. You know, you go out Saturday after the game. Okay, so look, you normally you know you have nine, ten, ga- whatever, thirteen games, whatever. We're just not going to go out those times. You can still well, hang out with the fellas. You just can't go out trolling for chicks. So now there's no non-conference games, right? So they're down to like ten games, and I, maybe there's still a bye week. So the, the opportunity, like the weed al- analogy, I just don't know if I buy it, Doug. I mean, essentially, you put 25,000 kids who are age 18 to 22 on a college campus. And, yeah, you can easily say, hey, man, I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to go to the parties. I'm not. And then you're walking down the street one day, and somebody recognizes you. Hey, man, it's that quarterback for State University. Yo, come hang out with us. Dude, we're so proud of you. You were sick last year. Everybody's having a good time. The ladies are in bikinis. It's just not realistic in the deep, especially in the deep south where the weather's warmer. You know, it's not realistic to say, hey, man, just hold off on everything. I mean, like, maybe if you we, – we saw this nationally, Doug. Okay? It was easy for the first couple weeks of March and into April. Uh, hey, hold off. Let's everybody quarantine. But what happened come two months in? Like, America – was based a lot of them out there were just like no I'm not doing this I'm sick of it I need to hang out and then you know we see where we are with coronavirus I, and those are a lot of adults refuse to listen so now we're expecting 20 year olds to have that discipline yes it's just, yes if, if you want if you want to play your sport yes that, that's that's what it, that's what it takes this year this particular uh, listen, year I agree. this is a series, I agree. like here's here's the problem you'll get you'll get the guy who'll be like well look you know I I just I'm concerned about be, like I thought you're concerned about being safe 
Right? Like, oh, wait, wait, you can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't say I'm concerned about being safe, but I still want to go out and party. You can't, can't have it both ways. And that's the problem with that's the opting out. Way that's way to look the, at it. Yeah. That's, that's anyone's way of looking at it. If, if, you, that, that's, if you say, I want to opt out of the season, like that's my problem with opting out. We operate as if when you opt out, I'll say, like, okay, you're good, you're safe, you're fine. Go live your life. The problem is if you opt out, unless you're going to self-quarantine and isolate, you're just, as, you're just as likely to contract, if not more so, because there's not the testing and you don't have the doctors testing you. Okay, well, now, hold on. Wait a second. If you opt out... Stay home and do Zoom classes. You're not constantly around a bunch of 18 to 22 year olds. You're, you're in your home. Your family's there. You're probably grinding during the day, working out for multiple hours, going to the gym. Wait, wait. So, so you're, you're working. Wait, wait. You're working out, Jason. Where are you going? You doing your, your garage? You going somewhere to work out? You're going to the field with like a couple teammates or a private coach, right? You're going to go to a workout facility. You're a football player. You're going to lift weights. You're going to yeah, interact okay, with other fine, people. Fine. So again, wait, wait. So you're telling me? Well, this is what you're telling me, okay? You're telling me that if a kid stays home, he'll have the personal self-discipline to not well, go right, out. Well, to hold on, he'll to, there. Okay. Well, it's actually more dangerous because now, because the parents are the ones who are really at risk and the grandparents are the ones who are really Certainly. at risk statistically. Certainly. So it's more dangerous for them that you're there. And then you're telling me that the parents are going to have control over the 19 and 22 year old kid at home and tell him he can't go out. But the college coach who actually would mandate his playing time can't tell them the same thing like you're 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 telling me a kid is capable of the personal self-discipline if he's at home with no football season but he's okay. not capable of the personal self-discipline if he's on a college campus so you uh, we were in quarantine at home here and i'm a gym guy you know we, you and i both like to work out play sports i i couldn't go to the gym for two months so what did my wife do she said let's go online and order some weights you can't find them anywhere so we're hunting down the Dick's Sporting Goods, and finally they show up. My wife runs over, gets the weights. Now I'm at home lifting weights. You don't think Micah Parsons of Penn State or Russo, the kid from Miami who opted out, you don't think they have access to private coaches who can then get them the weights so they're not at a major facility around all these other people no. who may not follow the rules? You no. don't think those guys have access to that? I, I think, way, that, I think they way, do. I, I, listen, listen, we're, we're talking about so how big is Micah Parsons? I mean, he's like 6'2", 235, rocked up. This is a guy who probably, by the way, can now sign with an agent. If no, no, I, that, that's, what this, that's what this And I know he has a little baby, and I, I, I understand and I respect that, you know. He's 6'3", 245, okay? Yeah. He's not ordering shake weights at his house to keep him at that size. He's going to a facility and working out with a professional trainer, as you said, which, again, now you're going into one of those facilities, only you don't have COVID testing, you don't have the doctors, you're doing the exact same thing, only you're not wait, doing it on the watchful you? eye of Penn State. But wait, why are you? What, if you have an agent, which Rousseau and Parsons certainly do, they're already probably setting them up with private coaches in healthy atmospheres where they're not going to be around. How is it more healthy than religion? being at Penn State? Explain that to me. We've seen outbreaks at every college around the. Wait, 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 wait. But we also we have outbreaks at home, Jason, and 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 just you know like Oklahoma, they had 19 kids test positive the first time, then no positive tests since. Do you know why? Because when you're on college campus, you can isolate a guy, you can have him quarantine. Well, that's you in have June. doctors to treat them. <laughs> you have tests. That's in June. You don't what have. You're, when you're, all the rest you're, of the wait, listen. Show this up. this is what you said. You said he has the ability to train. He yeah. has the ability to have the self-discipline to not go out. He's living right? with his family. He's not around 20,000 other kids, yeah? Okay, well, first of all, most schools, all the kids aren't back on campus. They don't have those sorts well, of things. Well, not problems. yet. That, but, but, that's where it gets scary, Doug. That's the problem where I'm like, whoa, Okay, whoa, so, whoa. so now Are you're at home. You're at work? home. You're at home. You're a potential first-round pick. And you mean to tell me that Micah Parsons, the only thing he's doing is going to a gym, which, by the way, they don't have the same ability to clean, to test, to treat, that they have at, at Penn State. And then he's going straight home, take care of his baby, hang out with his family, nothing else for the next six months. Months. Well, but, you're, but he you're can't. But he him can't. Like do, he's a but he can't. Guy. But he can't. I'm. I, whatever he is, it doesn't matter. The he, same no, no, thing. No, no, that's, no, no. Time the out, same Doug, exact you know thing that you're asking of him. No, you're asking. Doug, you know this. Wait, he's hold on, Ryan. Ryan, music. Ryan, Ryan, hold on, hold on, Ryan, music. Who's yes, making sense? Am, am I making sense or is JC making sense? Please help. I feel like <laughs> I, I'm. I'm using his own argument against him, and he's saying no. 
college students are incapable of having the self-discipline to not go out, but that's only on a college campus, not when they're at home. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, 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 time out, Ryan, before you jump in. What is more likely to be a, a accelerant toward you using alcohol and partying and having fun? Being around 20,000 other kids on a college campus with uh, no adult supervision in the dorms or off campus, you're living in an apartment, or at your parents' house where you live with both your parents? What, what I would say is... Ryan, nobody drinks in high school. <laughs> nobody, n- oh, no right. one, would ev- no one, right. no one would ever drink in high school, and no oh, college God. kid would ever come. No twenty-one-year-old college kid would ever come home from co- college and dare have a drink under there. Like the first thing you do when you get home from your first year in college, which you probably did, was you crack a beer, kind of challenging the old man's authority. Everybody does Heck that. Yeah. Everybody does yeah. that, right? So all, the, all of a sudden, Michael Parsons is not going to go out and have a beer, not going to hang out the whole year? Of wait. course he is, Jason. It's a load <laughs> so, of crap. As, you're, being, as you're, much, you're, you're being sold a load of crap. You're buying not, it. Not, it's only, uh, it's only on. about one thing. It's only about one thing. You have a good draft stock, and if you play, you could get hurt, or you might hurt your draft stock. Stop that's the does. only thing Stop it's about. The, I, that's the only thing it's about. Let me, let me just – I'll map it out for you one more time. Micah Parsons – is not just a guy who's cracking a beer. He's meeting with prominent NFL agents. You and I are both rep by a power. You said he already has an agent in Hollywood. Wait, Michael, you said he already has an agent. You said he's already got an agent. That's why he's working out with somebody. Now he's spending uh, all know. of his time. Do you know how long it takes for you to meet with an agent? Doug, Doug, you think he's just now meeting with agents? Michael no, Parsons, I think he's already got. I think he already has. No, I think he already has the guy. So, but you exactly. just told me. So he's here, already got the guy. Just, wait, the hold guy on. We can we can run Michael back Parsons, the we what? can run if back the tape if you would like, line, Senator. You can make we, millions of dollars. Yes. If you go out and hang out with Joe Neighbor and and a buddy from elementary school who's who's a dropout and who wants to you know go to keggers all the time, you can screw it up and fall down the charts. It's your decision, just like Justin Blackman. You went to Oklahoma State. You remember him, right? Awesome receiver on the field. What was he doing during the week? He was posted up at the local bar drinking multiple times a week. If Micah Parsons has the discipline to avoid campus, stay home, lock it down, do Zoom, I don't see why that's not a better chance than being around 20,000 other of your buddies on campus. If, listen, where it's listen just like a it, party it, first, first of all, first, and, and first of all, first, happy, first, first, first of all, I, I, I get that I get that you're at Virginia Tech and you're a civilian. Okay. But most college football players aren't hanging with everybody else throughout the week. They're just not, not during football season. They're not, they might hang, they might have a lady and they might hang with some, they might hang with the dudes after, but you just, you just don't, you hang with your fellas, you play video games, you work out. That's why you have these facilities. You hang out around the facilities. But what you're stating to me, if he was, if he, if these guys would tell you, and the same with the NFL, if they were really legitimately quarantining and isolating themselves during the year, instead of going sure, but they're not. And the likelihood of them doing it is, is, is minute at best. And then the discipline it takes to do that is the same discipline you said that they lack. So, uh, all right, last thing. Um, uh, Colin seems to be selling any of his Laker stock. Are you buying Laker stock or selling Laker stock? <laughs> so what, I'm supposed to sell stock because LeBron hasn't looked good in a couple games playing alongside Deion Waiters and J.R. Smith? Like, really? No, I mean, if, I'm, if there's Lakers stock that's falling, give it to me, all of it, all of it. Shovel it in my gullet right now, Doug. I mean, seriously, <laughs> people are going to bet against LeBron winning the title with a healthy Anthony Davis. Yeah, there's going to be some stumbling. Clippers have stumbled here in the bubble. Bucks have stumbled a little bit. Uh, Bucks have, by the way, lost five of six. Let's see what happens. Dating back to pre, uh, back in March, uh, everybody's going through. It's late season doldrums. I put zero stock in the Lakers' struggles. The offense has not looked crisp, but what do you expect when you take away your starting shooting guard and your backup point guard who leads the second unit? You know, just as the Bucks look bad with without Bledsoe uh, in that loss, and then you know he comes back and plays a little bit, and they just off kilter against the Nets. Lakers are still going to the finals. I think they win the title, beating the I pick Celtics, but I, it's probably Bucks. Jason McIntyre, the podcast which starts uh, next week. Is called Straight Fire. It drops every morning at 5 a.m. Eastern Time in the iHeartRadio app, wherever you download podcasts. How about this? Doug, how about this? If if Trevor Lawrence opts out, we are going to go, we'll give it like 20 minutes, you and I discussing the merits. By the way, if you were advising Trevor Lawrence right now, would you tell him stay and play or opt out and, and don't, don't play? I mean, if you want to play football, play football. Yeah, but he, 
what, what, he's 19. What does he know? If he's saying, you know, Doug, you're a former college athlete. You host a radio show. You talk to a lot of people. You're smart. What would you do, Doug? If you want to play football, play football. You don't have to. But I mean, just this, this, like, you know, you get guys, like, man, I love football. Do you? I mean, if you love football, by the way, he's 20. He's going to be 21 in October. He's engaged, 20, be married. Okay. Like, you know, you got a chance to win a, what, a second national title? Um, cause they won it, what, two years ago, right? You got a chance to win a second national title at, at Clemson. Like, I don't know if you want to play football, play football. If you don't want to play football, don't, but I don't, don't tell me I love playing football and like, okay, then play, lead the team. Now nah, I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I want to, I, I want to opt out. I understand you can get hurt, but you, you can get hurt playing football. It, like you're a football yeah. player. It's the, it's a job hazard. So, but and, and you a quarterback, you're less likely after- than any, huh? Wouldn't you rather get hurt after securing that lucrative rookie contract in the NFL as opposed to playing for free at Clemson? I, oh, I went there. I mean, I? No, it, it, okay, so regardless of COVID, would, it, would, you, would you play for Trevor Lawrence? I would tell him no. I, I would say, did you see what happened to the Red Sox pitcher? He got COVID, and then they detected some sort of wacky heart ailment that, they, that the doctors told him was due to COVID. Bro, uh, he's a professional athlete getting paid. Trevor, don't risk it. You know, you had a great run. At oh, okay, again, but again, but, but again, we're, do, we're doing this thing. Like, you're more likely to get COVID. Like, you're not playing because of COVID. You're not playing because you get hurt playing football. Which is it? I would sooner avoid COVID than I would fear of getting injured in football. But the percentages would actually tell you you're more likely to get injured playing yes, football. Yes, 100% than, than, the percentages than you are, are than opposite. Than you are in, in, in COVID. I mean, like, yeah. look, I just, you, you, you have, he has exactly, what, 10 to well, they have ACC championship. They're doing what? Nine plus one. So he has 10, 11, he's 11 or 12 games left to say he plays at Clemson. And then the rest of his life, he can be a pro. So you can skip those 12 games. Okay. Leave your team in the lurch because you know, it's about you oh, and, and your, they'd understand. He wanted, I, I didn't say they wouldn't understand, but I, I didn't understand. They would say they wouldn't understand, but it's a, it's a very selfish move, right? Oh, <laughs> because, no, it's not. It's how not, how not so? What? It's a smart move. He won them a national championship. It, does, he it doesn't have to, wait. Hold on, hold on. It, it, I didn't say it was smart or dumb. It doesn't matter. It's selfish. It's it, it, it's a decision based upon what's best for him. That by definition is selfish. Isn't correct? That everybody does. Does, does that help? His, does that help or hurt their? Wife, does that help or hurt their it. team? Hold on. Does that help or hurt their team? Well, they're loaded with five star recruits. Does everybody. it help or hurt their team? Hurt. Does Obviously okay. It, it hurts, hurts your team. Now, would it, now look. Has his was his draft stock sky high when last season was over? Wait, are you saying Rousseau and Parsons and all these guys are selfish for opting out? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, but Trevor Lawrence, but Trevor Lawrence especially, he's the quarterback, and his draft stock has not changed. You know, since he won a national championship, he was going to be the number one pick this coming year. Whenever he came out, right, B- barring some catastrophic injury, that, that would, wouldn't have changed. So, had he wanted to not play this year. He could have, at the end of last season, said, look, I, I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. I want to be a pro. I'm going to take this year off, and I'll cheer for whoever's the quarterback at Clemson. But now we're here at August 6th, and if now you opt out, yeah, now, now it went from being a little selfish to incredibly selfish because but it's a decision changed. based solely I mean, upon your own interest. That, no, by definition, change, is selfish. You can change when the data changes, and the data has significantly changed since January when the season ended. Are you kidding me? The, the definition of selfish is a person lacking consideration of others concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. That's selfish. By definition, it would be a selfish move. Jason oh, McIntyre, it's Straight God. Fire, the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, Doug. Later, man.